Hello guys. Today I'm gonna show you how to make future house like Mike Williams and Justin Milo. And if you haven't figured it out already, I'm gonna show you my remake of Face Up to the Sun. Like all my remakes, this is made 100% with my own samples and sound banks. So if you're interested in getting those, definitely head over to my website. Thank you so much in advance. Now, let's go. Welcome to the project everyone! So to some of you beginners out there, this might look very intimidating at first glance, but I assure you, it's very simple. So yeah, we'll just go through the track from left to right, from top to bottom, uh, let's go! So the first two bars is just a super simple build-up, just a build-up loop. A reverse recording of the lead. One long chord that is played by the drop chords. And just a couple of risers. And right before the drop we have these really nice percussion sounds. This reverse percussion really helps to kind of like bring you into the drop. It's a trick that Brooks uses a lot. Generally it's a really nice thing to add. It kind of like sucks you into the drop, uh, if that makes sense. So for the drums part of this track, we start off here with a super simple basic standard beat or whatever. It looks like this. We have two kicks, one ride and one cowbell on every single beat. And then of course some claps. So yeah, very simple, very solid kind of drum beat. Now down here I try to recreate uh, a kind of a, a fill that, uh, that's there in the original track and it sounds like this. Same thing going on over here. And if we move over just a bit we have the hi-hats coming in over here. This sample sounds pretty harsh in itself, but in the context of the mix, it uh, it sounds really good to me. And in the second part of the drop, the only thing we have coming in is a top loop as well. Oh, and I almost forgot the drop claps as well. Now, this is actually a loop that looks like this, but what I did to it was I shortened it, so I only had one clap, and then I just made the one that hits on the kick a bit shorter and the one that hits on the clap a bit longer. So yeah, that's it for the drums. When it comes to the drums, um, there isn't generally a lot of processing going on. It's mostly just drag and drop samples. So now when we get into the lead, it gets a little bit more spicy. So yeah, the lead in this track is very, it's very airy, it's very dependent on the reverb in the sound. But before I show you all the processing, I'm gonna show you what layers I used. And there are quite a lot of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 layers in fact. I'm gonna turn off all the processing so you can hear what the preset sounds like on their own. The last one being mainly a white noise. So all of those sounds are from either my Silent Bank that is out right now, you can go get it. And also from my Serum Bank, which is coming Friday next week. So stay tuned for that, I know a ton of you guys have been wanting to get your hands on that. So uh, yeah, it's done, it's, uh, it's finally coming out, so super excited for that. And finally down here we have two whistles. The whistle is a huge part for this particular sound and it's something that Mike Williams and Mesto uses a lot. And as far as I know they use this plugin, Whistler 2, it's free so you can go google that and get it for free. The whistle gives the sound a lot of the characteristic mid-tones that you can hear. So here's what all the layers sound like together with no effects on them. And 
And a little side note, take note of the length of the notes. A lot of notes in that sentence. Because that's something that can greatly impact the sound of whatever you're making. Uh, and it's often a bit overlooked. Now, going into the processing of the lead, we start off here with a bit of sound organizer. And quite a lot of Wave Shaper, which is a distortion plugin. We have a ton of OTT. And as you can hear, we're starting to bring out a lot of those low frequencies from the sound, which is definitely not what we want, but we're going to cut that out with EQ later. So after the OTT comes a fruity reverb. This one has 0.1 decay time and wet all the way up and it's very, very wide. What this is going to do is that it's going to put the lead in a space kind of. This reverb is always turned on. We're going to automate some other reverbs later, but this is always on. And after that, we have two reverb plugins. One is Fruity Reverb 2 and one is Raum. Raum is by Native Instruments. It's also free, so you can just go get it off of Google. Anyway, both of these reverbs are pretty wet. We have a low cut filter on them as well, just so that we aren't getting any like low frequency reverb stuff going on. We don't want that because it's going to muddy up the mix. And what I did was I created an automation clip for both of these reverbs. They are kind of working together. So here are the automation clips for the reverb. But the problem is we still have a bunch of those lower frequencies that are really disturbing and they're gonna totally ruin the mix. So after that we add an EQ that looks like this. It cuts out all of the bass frequencies and the sub frequencies. It has a slight boost here at the low mids and with that it sounds like this. So just a lot cleaner. And here I did something pretty important. I added a reverb, took the wetness up all the way Low cut, very important, made it very wide. And I took the decay down to 0.1 seconds. And the main thing is I took down the dry. So I'm actually taking out the input signal. And what that does is that it creates a lot more of a, of a, of a smooth sound. And then to compensate for the volume that we've lost by taking out the dry signal, we're adding a bit of gain here inside a fruity limiter. And finally, that's it for the processing on the lead. So mainly a lot of distortion and compression, a lot of EQing, taking out those bass and low frequencies. And then finally that trick where I take out some of the dry signal of the reverb to make it sound a lot more airy. And down here, the last automation is very interesting because this is actually just a volume automation for the entire lead sound. So you can kind of hear the difference that that makes. I chose to do this just because I wanted the lead to sound as similar as possible to the original. And that lead has some sort of gate or peak controller or something going on. But yeah, you're literally just like shaping the volume of the sound. And it creates a really cool effect in my opinion. And now we get into my favorite part, the bass. The top layer right here are the bass layers that aren't the sub bass. So this is obviously the sub bass. Sorry if you're listening on your phone, you won't be able to hear that. And finally right here we have a gross beat gate that makes the bass sound like this. Uh, it's kind of stuttering, it does that future house effect thing, you know? So all the bass layers are from my Serum Sound Bank, which like I said, will be out next Friday. And here are what those layers sound like. The final layer that I showed you, the, the long distorted one, that has its own channel rack and its own effects. It just has an EQ to take away some of that high edge and another EQ to take out a lot of the bass and all of the sub frequencies as well as a kickstart. All of the other layers are routed to the same channel. First off, we have some Wave Shaper to distort everything a little bit, and it also kind of glues it together. Then we have some OTT, which is really gonna glue it together. An EQ to boost a little bit of the high frequencies. And finally, an EQ to take away all of the sub frequencies. For the sub bass, just a little bit of OTT. Turn the highs and the mid compression all the way down and an EQ just to make sure that we are just getting those sub frequencies. So now we get down to the chords. First off, we have these saw type chords that sounds like this.
And these chords consist of three layers, the first one being the simple sauce preset from my silent sound bank. The second one being a soy preset from the serum bank. And finally one layer that is pretty much just white noise. First off, what I always like to do to my chords is add a little bit of OTT to glue the layers together, and it also makes it sound a little bit brighter. Then we have some sound grizer, an EQ that looks like this because we don't really want any bass in this sound. And that's it for the processing on the chords. Very simple, I love to do chords. It's uh... Now we also have a piano that looks like this. And this is the stage grand piano from FL Studio. Here's what it sounds like with no effects. First up, a lot of OTT. OTT is one of those things on pianos that really bring out a lot of texture and brightness from the sound. A bit of sound goodizer on that as well. And finally an EQ to get rid of all of the bass and sub frequencies. And it's especially important to EQ after you've added a bunch of compression and stuff like that. Because like I said, it brings out a lot of frequencies from the sound. And over here in the second part of the drop, we have this little, um, like a lead pluck kind of thing. This is the future attack preset from the silent bank. And we're getting to the final stretch. We have some effects and sweeps and stuff down here. All of these are just white noise. I like to do this. Having a sample of white noise is very usable and very versatile. So this is what it sounds like. It's just following the rhythm of the melody. And if we move a bit further to the right, we have an exhaust and these ambient shot samples as well. It just kind of... Hello? Uh, that was Joe Biden, I'm so sorry. It's just there to bring some filler to the second part of the drop. And we also have an exhaust. And down here on automations, we just have the stuff that's controlling the little buildup I have. We have a kickstart, a filter, and the master volume, so nothing special there. We do, however, have this volume automation, and this volume automation controls all the instruments except for the lead. So it basically does the same things as the volume automation for the lead, um, except it's a little bit more tame. It's not as aggressive as the lead automation. And someone asked me, what do I put on my master channel? Well, it depends a lot. I did put a couple of things on the master for this track, but keep in mind, this is not like a mastered track. I just like to put a couple things on the master for these YouTube videos, but it's by no means a, a like mastered track. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, I have one EQ on here. It looks like this. We have a little bit of OTT, a limiter to make sure we're not clipping. I also want some of that uh, compression that comes with it. And something very unusual. Some fruity fast distortion on the master channel. Yes, that's right. When I was listening to the original track, I found that it sounded like it was like clipping at times. It sounded like a little bit distorted. When I just added a tiny bit of distortion on the master, it just... I don't know, it, it just glued everything together. Um, so that's something to try out, I guess. And yeah, that's really it. That's all there is to this track. Like I said, it is pretty simple. It just comes down to a lot of layering and processing. And that together with mixing is probably the three most important things when it comes to making a track sound at least pretty good. So if you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe and leave a comment what you thought about this. I, I personally think it sounds uh, really good. Also, don't forget that I'm doing a very big giveaway when I reach 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching uh, and I'll see you next Friday when I release my Serum Sound Bank. It's, uh, it's gonna be awesome. Hey, bye bye.